Blast 16 is an awesome front end for the Raspberry Pi that allows us to make our own Sega Genesis or Mega Drive Mini and include any games we want from the library of Genesis and Mega Drive games, and also Sega Master System, Game Gear, 32X, Sega CD. It's really awesome and a slick looking front end with a lot of cool features. So we covered this not too long ago, taking a look at what this thing can do. And the build for Blast 16 has been updated quite a bit since then. Some bug fixes, some new implementations on some features, and a lot of cool stuff like that. So today, we're gonna go ahead and take a look step by step, try to keep it as simple as possible for you guys on how to get this set up. Get your games on here and just get rolling with it. So we're gonna go ahead and swap on over to what we need to get and get prepared. Let's do it. Okay guys, so to begin, we are going to need to download a handful of things in order to get this project started. I'm gonna make it simple for you guys. I will have links in the description for all the downloads, everything that I use in this video, and also some of the products that I'm using to make this Sega Genesis Mini. But first up, obviously, the most important thing we're gonna to need to download is gonna be the Blast 16 SD card image. So you'll navigate to this website, and you will scroll down to the bottom where the download section is. The latest build as of this recording is 1.0.5. So you'll go ahead and download this SD card image. It's 1.2 gigabytes, so keep that in mind. There's always gonna be a change log and the user manual. Definitely recommend downloading the user manual because it'll explain what all the hotkeys are, what the file formats, all that good stuff is, but we'll be taking a look at that in a moment. So he also does have the old builds, the source code, and your box art. So the only other thing that you may, actually you probably will want to download is gonna be the box art collections. So he does have them all here. They, you know, it's not too big of a file for each. The Mega Drive and Genesis box arts are gonna be the biggest. So go ahead and grab those now if you need them. If you do not use the box arts or you don't have your own box art to use with this build, it will just have like a template saying that there's no box art when you're scrolling through your games. We want our stuff to look nice. So go ahead and grab those box arts and get ready. Now, once you've got that downloaded, we'll we'll do the, the building of the SD card and all that in a moment. But the next thing we're going to need is going to be WinDisk Imager. So go ahead and download that as well. That's going to write the image to our SD card. Now, the thing is for me, I'm using FileZilla and Ethernet cable plugged into my Raspberry Pi in order to transfer files over. This is a very simple process. You can go about this by just loading everything onto a USB thumb drive, popping it into your system and letting it load that way. But for me, I find this easier and quicker to do and making things a little more manageable in order to edit things or change things. So definitely recommend going about it this way as this is how I'm gonna show it working in this video. Now, if your computer does not have an SD card reader, I did recently purchase this one for another computer that I have and it works great. So if you do not have an SD card reader, you will need one. Doesn't matter if it's a cheap dollar one that you got as a bonus item in a package of a kit of something, it doesn't really matter. I do recommend this one, but if you already have one, cool. If you need one, hey, borrow one, buy one. If you foresee using something like this all the time, definitely recommend this one. So next thing that I'm using, obviously, is the Megapie case from Retroflag. This thing is legit. My favorite Raspberry Pi case, and it really looks like a Sega Genesis Mini. If you compare this to images of the official Sega Genesis Mini, they're pretty much identical. The placement of the USBs, the buttons, the size. It's it's like Retro Flag was on point with this. And Sega, you know, obviously they're going to be on point with the Sega Genesis, you would hope, right? But both cases look identical other than this is Megapie case and has the Retro Flag logo on it. So it really does play the part. Really recommend this. You don't necessarily need it. But it is nice with Blast 16 because our on and off button and our reset safely works, and that is great. This kit right here does come with like a fan, um, 
and pretty much everything you need. I know there's some other kits here that come with a power supply and all that stuff. If you already have a Raspberry Pi, you most likely will already have some of this stuff. With these kits, though, I did find uh, with the heat sinks, if you're using a Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, the main heat sink, you cannot use it because it will stop the fan from working. It will press on it. If you're using just the standard Raspberry Pi 3, you will be fine with this heat sink. But just wanted to make note of that. If you're using a Pi 3B+, Plus, this heat sink, or at least the one that I got with it from this kit, it, it stopped the fan from working. It pushed on it. So keep that in mind because the Pi 3B Plus does have a built-in heat sink, a dissipator on it, and it is a little higher of a chip than the Pi 3, the standard version. So there you go. You can also use the controller that they sell, the RetroFlag USB controller. It is Japanese style in that it is a lot smaller than what you know people in the US and Europe may be accustomed to. It's a fine controller, and I have one, and I have used it. Not too much of an issue with it. It works right out the box, pretty much. You just have it plugged in, and it works. You don't have to set any configs, at least for me, that was the case. But for a more comfortable, bigger controller, I do highly recommend the RetroBit Sega Genesis Arcade Pad. Officially licensed by Sega, it is definitely slick. I love this controller. I'm using it on this build as we speak. So those are the things I recommend. But like I said, the main things that we will need for this tutorial is going to be FileZilla, WinDisk Imager, and the Blast 16 SD card image. So with that, let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, now that we have everything downloaded that we need, let's get this started. We've got FileZilla, WinDisk Imager, and the Blast 16 latest release. When you download this, it will be a zip file, so you will need to extract it to your PC. I am using 7-zip. I'm gonna extract to Blast 16 release. This just creates a folder and puts it all in there, keeps it organized, so that's the way I'm doing it. I've already extracted it, it takes about a minute, but you will get this folder here with these files. The Blast 16 user manual, the actual image, which is the only thing we're really worried about at this moment, the license and the readme text. So we will be visiting the manual in a moment, but this is the main thing we need. Extracted, it's gonna be 3.5 gigs, so keep that in mind. If you're building this up and you're gonna have a lot of Sega CD games, I would definitely recommend going 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes with your micro SD card. I have the complete US release of Sega CD games on my drive and it's around 40 gigabytes, so keep that in mind. Definitely Sega Genesis and everything else is gonna be a lot smaller than that. So however you wanna do it, keep that in mind. But if you go really small, if you're like 16 or 32 gigs, you're gonna be limited, so definitely 64 or 128. So once you have that extracted, the next thing we're gonna to need to do is burn the image to our SD card. So make sure you have the SD card plugged into your computer any which way possible. Either you got a built-in SD card reader or you're using a USB reader like we've already spoke about earlier. But we're going to go ahead and open up WinDisk Imager. Now there's going to be one really important thing you need to pay attention to here. Once you have this opened up, there is going to be this side panel right here that says device and you're going to select which one is your SD card. Really, really make sure you have determined which drive letter your SD card is you know, delegated to, assigned to. So for me, it's gonna be letter E. Now, if you accidentally select something else and you write this image to it, you're gonna delete everything on whatever that drive is. So that is very important to check. Whenever I'm burning an image, I always double check in the file navigation, whatever the heck this thing is called, right? I scroll down, double check. Because if, for example, I select F, and I write that image to this, I'm gonna lose all this important stuff that I have here. So always pay attention to that. For me, it's drive E. So once you have the device selected, double, triple check. I cannot like, you know, state that enough. Make sure you're doing that correctly. You don't wanna lose some stuff that, you know, is really important. Now from there, this little folder icon where it says image file, that's where we're gonna select the Blast 16 image. So let's go ahead and select that folder navigate to where we have extracted that build. 
So right here, Blast 16, the latest release, open that up and then select your image file. There's, it's not going to show any other files. It's only going to show the image files. So as long as you're navigating to the proper release, you're not going to accidentally burn the wrong image. So there you go. Click open and now it's going to show. That's the image that we're going to be imaging to this device, letter E for me. So right here, we're going to go ahead and click right. It will give you a little, you know, confirmation. Writing to a physical device can corrupt the device. Are you sure you want to continue? As long as we've double checked, it's the correct device. Go ahead and click yes. Now, depending upon how fast your SD card reader, your USB drive, however you have this set up, this can take a few minutes. As you see here, it's going to take me maybe about four minutes or so, maybe five minutes to write this image to the card. That may speed up. I don't know, but it will show how fast it is writing down here. Right now it's like jumping around 15 megabytes per second. So just be patient, let that write. Um, if you're using an SD card that has multiple part partitions on it uh, that you've used for something else, you may get a bunch of warnings and all sorts of other stuff. For me, I am using an SD card that I was using for something else that had a bunch of partitions. I just simply reformatted it, got rid of all the partitions, just made it one partition. That way I don't have to deal with all that. So let's go ahead and give that a moment and then we'll go ahead and get this build started. Okay, awesome. The image has been written to our SD card. We may get these little windows that pop up that say, hey, do you want to format this drive? And you'll be like, what the heck? Drive G, what is that? It's because there's going to be multiple partitions on that SD card. Just go ahead and disregard that. Don't pay any attention to this crap. Just get out of it. Don't worry about it. The write is successful. That's all we need to know. So from here, we're going to go ahead and pop out our SD card and put it into our Raspberry Pi and boot the system up. But don't leave yet. We still need to use our PC. So let's go ahead and boot it up and see what happens. Okay, so I've popped in my SD card, powered on the system. Let's see how this loads. And there we go. We got a little failure thing down there. It is noted in the manual that this may happen. And if it does happen, just reboot like it says. So I'm going to power off and power right back on. So there we go, after rebooting from that first little error, we're good to go. No games found though. I do have my RetroBit controller plugged in. Let me make sure that this is working. I'm gonna hit start, and yep, everything is good. So from here, what we're gonna need to do in order to start loading up our games and our artwork is we're gonna wanna go to Tools. So in tools, we're going to go to command line. Now from here, I do recommend having a keyboard plugged in. Definitely going to be required for this part. Let's go ahead and hit A on our controller and go to command line. And there we go. We are now in the command line. So, yep, we do need to have the keyboard attached. So from here, we're going to type in IF config and then hit enter. Now what this is gonna do is give us our IP address. I do have an ethernet cable plugged in to my device. This is gonna be important in order to use FileZilla to transfer our files over. So as you see, right now I am gonna reset this later, but we do have the IP 192.168.254.42. So take note of what yours is. It's not gonna be the same as mine, so don't copy mine down. Type in yours or write it down, like I said, and now we're going to go ahead 
and jump back into our PC. So from here, we're gonna open up FileZilla. Now in FileZilla, we're gonna need to do a couple things. We're gonna be typing in the host, which is gonna be the, the IP address, our username and our password and our port. So port, put port 22, username is gonna be pi, P-I, password is gonna be blast16, B-L-A-S-T, 16. Now for the host, you're gonna go ahead and type in that number that you got on your system here. For me, it's that 192.168.254.42. So once you got that in, we're gonna go ahead and click quick connect. If you don't put in port 22, it's gonna give you failures, or at least that's from my experience. If I left the port empty, it will just not allow you to access anything. But once you've done that, you're gonna have your Blast 16 build on this side. This is gonna be your PC side, the left side, that's where all your files are on your PC. The right is gonna be the file system for Blast 16. So on here, we're gonna to navigate to Blast 16, and the most important thing is gonna be our games folder. So click on that. And as you see, we do. he already has this set up with the folders that you're gonna need. So you don't necessarily have to make these folders. Each one is gonna have an empty folder. MD for Mega Drive and then Box Arts for the Box Arts. There's gonna be absolutely nothing in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the MD folder just so I could transfer mine over. Now on my PC, I already have everything set up for what I wanna do. So I have this new Blast 16 uh, build folder and I have my Mega Drive games, my Sega Genesis games all ready to go. So as you see here, none of these games are zipped. You will need to make sure they're all unzipped. So if you have a pack of games and they're all zipped, simply what you would do is just select all of them, like, you know, just as such, if they were zipped, and then right click and then extract them here. And it'll extract all the actual games to that location. So if you need to do that, do that now get everything set up and I do have my box arts ready to go for this particular build. Now the main thing you're going to need to do, especially if you're using your own box arts or even the packs that he has available on his website is make sure that the names are the same as the actual game name. So like for example, beyond Oasis USA, that's going to need to be exactly the same for our JPEG as you see here. So just make sure all your box arts are named exactly the same as your ROMs, and you'll be good with that. So back on FileZilla, what we're gonna wanna do is either you could've just left that folder there. I mean, I don't know why I do that. You could just overwrite everything, but take whatever you're transferring over, navigate to that games folder to where you wanna drop your games at. If you're gonna use Sega CD, you may need to put your BIOS files in there. You would just simply make a folder here, BIOS, and put those folders and files in there. The uh, user manual does explain all this, what the actual file paths and directories need to be. So BIOS, you would just simply put your BIOS folder, just like he has here in that complete uh, games directory, you would have BIOS, put all your folders in there, and then in the games folder, you'll put each system. So the BIOS folder would actually be in here in the Blast 16 folder. So make sure you've done that correctly. I did kind of misexplain that a little bit, re-recorded this part, uh, but you would have your games right here where all your game folders are. And then right here back in the, the Blast 16 folder where that games folder is, you will have a BIOS folder. That's where you will put all your Sega CD stuff. But for me, not doing Sega CD on this build, but that is where you would put your Sega CD uh, BIOS is at. But from here, we're gonna go ahead and transfer over. So I've navigated to where I have my build. As you see on this side, like I said, it is your PC. So I navigated the desktop and then I'm looking for my Blast 16 build, new Blast 16 build, that's the one I wanna use. And then I'm just gonna drag it and drop it over. And at the bottom, it's gonna show the queued files 
and them transferring over Sega Genesis, even with the artwork, is not going to take very long. As you see, it finished very fast. If you're doing Sega CD, that could take a little longer, but that's all you need to do is transfer everything over. So there's my folder for Mega Drive. You see I have all my games and my box arts on the Blast 16 build. Like I said, if you want to do Master System, Game Gear, Sega CD, 32X, you would just do the same thing. You can just either find where you have your ROMs on this side, navigate to this side, go to, you know, if you're doing Game Gear, put all your ROMs over here, put all your box arts in here, or do like I did and just transfer everything, let it overwrite everything. Like I said, you don't have to delete the folder. You can just overwrite it. That's just some weirdness that I always do. So from there, we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and transfer back over to our system. So back on our system, we're still in the command line, as you can see here. So you can either just, you know, type in sudo reboot, reboot, whatever, or you can go ahead and just power off your system and power it back on. Since we're using a Megapie case, I'm just going to power off. It's going to safely shut the system off, or you could just hit reset. I don't know why I didn't do that. Power back on and let the system reboot back up. And if everything went as planned, we will have our list of games. So there we go. We have everything transferred to this build. We are ready to game. So if it boots up and it's like this and there's no games and it says no favorite games, just hit down or up on your controller to get to your actual games list. Really awesome stuff. So let's take a look at a few of the options real quick. So hitting start, you can go into settings. You got general settings. You can change the language to English. Bunch of options. I believe um, Portuguese was, was added recently. So there you go. You can change your logo to whatever region you want. I'm gonna put it at the USA because that's where I'm at and that's the logo I'm accustomed to. You can turn your music off or on. Really nice. You have emulation options as well. Auto load to auto load whatever game you exited out of. Uh, you can mess around with the cores here. Energy energy scaling, yes or no, bilinear filter. I would just leave that off. Doesn't look great to me. You can do scan lines or your TV filters. So pretty cool. We do have a frame option. So the frame option is defaulted to off where there's nothing. Now if you change it to one of these, I think it looks really neat. It works well when you're playing your games, just gives you that little bezel on the side. So there is that. I'm gonna leave it to Blast 16 Blue. That's the one I like anyway. So from there, you can also do your inputs. I'm using the Retrobit controller. I didn't have to input anything. I didn't have to set up anything. Everything is working the way it has was intended anyway. So tools, you can go and delete games. I've already showed this before. You can back up and restore. This would be if there's like a minor update to the Blast 16 build, uh, and he'll offer like, you know, a, a, an update file instead of a complete SD card image. Typically, he'll have the newest SD card image with the updates on there, but you can also do where you back up and restore your stuff. So if you have all your games, everything set up, you would pop in a USB drive, back it up. It'll put everything onto that drive. Uh, once you've, you know, burned the new version of the image, if there wasn't an update available, you would simply hit restore and it would restore your system to the way you had it with all your games and box arts. Now from here, you go to you can go to RetroArch if you want to mess around with some options in there. They're really for advanced users. You don't really need to mess with that to enjoy this system. Really, you don't need to mess with any of this stuff if you don't want to. If you put some games on there you don't like, you didn't want to begin with, you can delete games if needed. Uh, we've shown this before, you would just simply click which games you want to delete and it would select it and then it would ask you to confirm. We're not going to delete anything. We don't want to do that. Help he gives you some information to send an email if you find some issues or you need some help or you can scan this QR code. Nifty. I like that because it makes it seem very similar to like these real uh, classic mini systems. And like I stated in my previous video, this, you know, the history behind Blast 16, this almost could have been what was on the Sega Genesis Mini. And it's unfortunate that it's not, but it's really awesome that we do have it for our own uses on the Raspberry Pi. Credits, you're gonna have some information here. 
I, I do kind of dig that my name's down there on the uh, special thanks to Mad Little Pixel. Really do appreciate that, man. Didn't have to, but I do appreciate it. So all the information there. You can reboot or shut down from here as well. Um, if you are using that Mega Pie case, you can just you know hit reset, reset the system, power off, do all that good stuff from there. So pretty cool. Nothing else we could really do here. So you also, when you're selecting your games, you do have where you can load your states. Back in that manual, it does explain all the hotkeys, everything. Definitely take a look at that to see how we're going to go about, you know, doing our save states, changing save state slots, all the little hotkeys really comes in handy and useful. So let's go ahead and load up a game. Why not get into some Castle of Illusion here? So loading the games do, does take a second to load, not a big deal. Gives you a nice little, I think this is a new addition, having a little splash screen with the logo while the game is loading. And there we go. The game is ready to rock. Really looks good. Everything controls great to me. Uh, perceivable input lag, I can't really comment too much on that. I've played a lot on these Blast 16 builds and everything has worked wonderfully well for me. This is really going to be something a lot of people dig. Oh, dang it, get your butt over here. I mean, for sure I'm still getting the Sega Genesis Mini, don't get me wrong. But just having a project like this, being able to add our own games, doing all the stuff that we want, having more compatibility with the Sega library of games than what we know for sure the Sega Genesis Mini is officially going to support. Uh, because, I mean, it's only got Sega Genesis games on the official version, but who knows if the built-in emulator and how it's set up is going to easily accommodate other systems. We'll have to wait for the hacking scene to find out, but... I hope this video was useful to you guys. Really would appreciate, you know, the thumbs up, the sharing, all that good stuff. Let me know if you need any further help. Drop a comment down below. I read all the comments. Try to stay engaged with you guys. And I know this video was a little long, but hey, I, I tried to cover all the bases that I possibly could think of. And man, definitely excited to be sharing this. We will be having more content in the future concerning these builds. But hopefully, you guys can get your, your Blast 16 Sega Genesis Mini rocking and rolling fairly easily. So from here to exit out the game, I'm just going to hit Select or the Mode button and C at the same time. And it goes ahead and loads back to the front end. Um, pretty cool. It auto-saved, so I'm pretty sure. Let's check that feature out before we go. Uh, let's go back to Castle of Illusion. I haven't used that feature yet, but let me let me see if it just auto loads where we left off because I believe I left that option on. Yeah, so it auto loads where you left off. So it like creates a save state automatically. That's pretty neat, but you can. I mean, that's not something I really would want to use. I would prefer just to have my save states individually, but you can turn that feature off in the settings menu. Like I said, never used it before, so kind of neat to see that. Let me see if it created a save state file. No, it didn't. It just caught, it just created that auto save. Pretty sure that's probably something that may be lost if you reboot the system. Not 100%. If you guys find out, let me know. I'm not going to bother checking that right now. But hey, really do appreciate it. With that said, guys, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.